gosh, I'm so sorry I'm late. Motherhood literally got in the way this morning. Uh, my daughter was up here. Oh my God, look at my face, you guys. I'm so, such a hot mess every morning. Um, sorry, I'm just trying to adjust my light. Oh, hey, it shows somebody likes something, but the, the video's not on. Or it doesn't show me my viewer. There you are. I think this thing is delayed. Who's my viewer? I'm going to put that light on. Is that too... I feel like that's such a weird light. I need to get one of those selfie things. Hi guys, shout out who you are. Say hello, good morning on this Wednesday. That feels like a Tuesday. Hey Amber, I'm sorry I'm late guys. Like I said, motherhood literally got in the way this morning and then I had to make a second cup of coffee because you know how the grind goes, right? Hi Tina, welcome. Um, Kayla, hey guys, hi Lori, oh my gosh, I'm so glad, I'm so glad that you guys are on, um, ready to learn all about bookings, okay, so I'm gonna jump right into it, I don't wanna drag this out any longer, cause I know that your guys' time is valuable, and, you know, there's plenty of other things that you could be doing than sitting on a live video, but it's good that you're taking that time to invest into your business, so I just really wanna talk to you guys about how to make the most of your calendar, because you always hear me talk about front-loading your calendar and making sure that, that, you know, you have parties on it, and that's really what's going to be the thing that's going to ensure your paycheck every month. Your calendar is a really great indicator of how your business is gonna look, right? It's gonna... If you have an empty calendar, you can probably have an idea of what your paycheck is going to be like in that month or going forward or whatever. So really, that's why I always talk about the importance of front loading and making sure your calendar is full, okay? So I'll kind of touch on that in just a second. Sorry, I have like a runny nose um, and an itch at the same time. Um, but I really just want to talk to you about how to get bookings on your calendar, okay? So I'm not going to talk to you about, um, like, the way I do things. Like, I want to talk to you today about how to get events on your calendar, how to get fundraisers on your calendar, how to get parties on your calendar. But I'm not going to talk to you about, like, how I do fundraisers, okay? That's a totally separate topic. If you want to know how, that, uh, how to do fundraisers, you could search it here in the group. You could go on YouTube, Google. There's plenty of trainings from lots of successful people. Oh, my God, I'm sorry, you guys. I'm um, uh, where you could find out how to how to run those and how those do but I'm gonna tell you how to get those bookings on your calendar because bookings oh my gosh you guys I need a tissue and I don't have one um, are going to be the the best way for you to ensure your paycheck each month okay so I have some notes here so that's why I keep looking down but um so like at some point like I'd say like the last two weeks of the month I'm kind of booking into the next month like I'm looking at my calendar ahead and I, I'm seeing what I have on it and I'm trying to get it filled right for the next month because I want to have that set up that's called front loading your calendar you don't want to wait until like now we're in January and you don't have anything on your calendar and you're just kind of hoping to get parties or whatever or you're hoping to get something on your calendar because you know what guys that's stressful and then you're gonna get burnt out and then you're gonna get discouraged and then before you know it, you're going to be, you know, your, your sensi business is going to be pushed to the side and you're going to be like, this business sucks. I hate direct sales. I'm never doing this again. Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> you know, like it's a cycle and it happens all the time. So in order to avoid that, all you have to do is just make sure that your calendar is full. Okay. So before I get into different ways that you can get parties on your calendar, sorry, I have to move some things around my hair. Um, before I get into that, um, I just want to show you like what front loading would be okay so front loading would basically be um, looking at your calendar for the month the, the month ahead right so right now this is January to be honest with you guys my calendar is not that great for January um, I have a couple basket parties out that I'm doing because I'm going to New Orleans on Sunday but other than that I need like I need more like I need a home party I want to try and see if I could do an event this month like I know that that's a goal for me and to be quite honest like the hustle and bustle of the holiday season and me being sick with my chi with my kids for three weeks straight, like, I could use that as an excuse and be like, well, that's not why I have parties on my calendar, which is why, I mean, that's 
pretty much the reason why I don't because I physically didn't have the energy to be following up with people but that but if I stop there and just let my January go because I don't have bookings on my calendar then my January is literally gonna suck <laughs> so I need to make sure that this is a priority to me so all this week I've been working on bookings yesterday you guys heard me talking about prospecting so everybody who's on my list about you know people that I've had conversations with about booking those are people who I'm following up with or people with my follow-up binder at the one month mark where I'm checking in to get that party which is what we'll kind of talk more about at the end of the week with follow-up um, so when I go to front load my calendar I first um, I go by like what's important for it important first which is my family and my kids and anything that we have going on in my personal life that doesn't have to do with Sensi goes on my calendar first like um, I highlight all my days like my family days like Saturdays and Sundays Saturdays I still do some Sensi things but I'm not really doing parties I used to do parties like home parties on Saturdays and I would accommodate my my hosts and you know it was more that was ruining me because I'm like why am I sitting here accommodating my host when I run my calendar I run my schedule and it was making me get burnt out and it was making me miss time with my family I told you guys I used to run 12 hour Facebook parties on Saturdays and Sundays when I first joined this business and I actually built my business on Facebook parties oddly, oddly enough but I was getting burnt out because I'd be sitting on the phone like this you know, my kids would be like, mommy, mommy. And I'm like, just wait a second, you know, and it's stressful. And then you get to the point where it doesn't become fun. And so you don't want to do it. So that's why you control your calendar. You control where you're getting these bookings, whether it's events, fundraisers, parties, whatever you want to call it, you control that time on your calendar. So look at your calendar. Now, if you don't have anything set up for January, now is the time after this video, open your calendar, grab a highlighter. I like to color code it like I mean, every month I kind of go different, but usually like pink I do for parties, orange is like my family days and stuff like that. So figure out what works for you. But, um, you know, I have my family days on the, um, highlighted so that I know that that's the time that I'm not doing parties. Um, my son is in the Cub Scout, so he has like den meetings and pack nights and things like that. So I will put those on my calendar first so that I know I can't book a party this Friday or, the, you know, the, on the 12th of that Friday because Dylan has a pack night that night. And I usually now do my part, my home parties um Friday evenings if if um you know if I can that's usually what the option is that I give to my host when she wants to book a home party I get those are the dates that I give her and I'm going to talk about that in a second on how to give your customers dates when booking parties okay so if you have a clear the view or a clear idea of what your schedule looks like in the month of January or February, whatever it is that you're booking, when you go to follow up with people or get parties booked, you're going to know exactly when you need to get that booked because it's not going to be left up in the air and you're not going to leave it up to them to, to get back to you with a date, you know? That's probably like honestly the worst thing that you can do is like be like, okay, yeah, just let me know a time that works for you where they'll be like, oh yeah, let me just, I got to think of a date or whatever people are not going to do that. You guys, they're so like, we get so busy in our lives and it's not up to somebody to get calendar uh, bookings on your calendar. So by you letting them come back to you with a date, they're going to forget, or it's not going to be a priority to the priority, priority to them. And you know, or it's just going to be up in there or, or it's going to turn into where you're accommodating them versus you running a business and this is your schedule and that's how they can get on your schedule. Does that make sense? Like, and plus when you give someone dates, it makes it seem, makes you seem that much more professional because it seems like your calendar is way more full than if you tell someone, yeah, just tell me when you want to party. Or if you say, hey, listen, I have January 10th, 11th, and 13th. Let me know which one works for you. You're giving them two to three dates. That's usually what I do for people. And when they hear that, it sounds way more professional on your end, and it sounds like your calendar is full. People are gonna wanna do do things with people who have full, you know, who have full calendars. If you sound like a professional and you're telling them that these are the dates that they have, it's just gonna sound way like in their eyes, like, oh, okay, those are the dates I have to choose from. And if none of those dates work, then you can always be like, okay, let me see what I can move around and we can, you know, figure something out. But usually when I give someone two to three dates, they choose one out of those three dates, okay? So, um, you know, highlight your personal and family days first, absolutely always. 
anything that you have going on, doctor's appointments for yourself, like, even for me, I mean, yes, this is with Sensi, but I'm not going to be here all next week, so obviously I have to put that on my calendar because I'm not going to be able to book parties there. So know, like, what you have going on in the month, and then every other day that's available that you can party, you highlight it, and then those will be the dates so that when you go to follow up with people, you could say to them, like I just said, give them those two to three dates to choose from and never leave it up in the air. And I think when you have that approach, it's gonna be easier for you to actually get that booking instead of waiting for it to, you know, to happen. Hold on, I feel like my screen, is it dark? Like, it just seems so dark to me. Um, so, know your calendar, um, you know, with like the goal setting of your calendar, like what you're going into in the month and how many days available you have to party. Because guess what too, if you're just going into this blindly, being like, oh hey, I'm trying to book all these parties, or I'm trying to get parties in my calendar, as opposed to I have three dates this month that I need to get booked right? Doesn't that seem less overwhelming than, oh my gosh, I have no parties on my calendar. Um, I have to follow up this person. Maybe this person will do it. Like you get frazzled. I don't know about you guys, but I get frazzled if I don't have a clear path as to what I'm working towards. So if you only have two or three dates throughout the month that you can have, that you can get a party booked, then, it, then all you know in January, I need to get two to three parties booked. That's it. Two to three parties, right? Now, of course you have to ask a lot of people, which is what we're going to get into, but you have a clear vision of the amount of parties that you're trying to get booked. Does that make sense? Does anybody have any questions so far about front-loading your calendar? While I take a sip of my coffee. Because I'm literally on, like, hyper mode this morning. So, um, if you have questions, let me know. I'll answer them as we go, okay? So, I want to talk to you guys about... Um, getting parties on your calendar, or bookings on your calendar, I should say, not parties, okay? So there are a number of different ways that you can get bookings on your calendar. Bookings just doesn't necessarily mean parties. Bookings can be events, they can be fundraisers, they can be parties, of course, um, casual sip and sniffs, or a time that you know that you're going to go meet somebody for coffee to, you know, share some sense with them or whatever. Whatever the case is, it's a booking on your calendar that's a schedule that you're, you know, pre-scheduling out to ensure that paycheck, to ensure your month, to ensure a good, successful, thriving business is through parties, okay? You guys, I cannot, or bookings, I should say. I keep saying parties. Bookings are going to be the lifeline of your business, like the bread and butter of your business. I mean, when we get into parties, obviously, you guys have heard me say home parties are going to be your best, like, you know, go-to as far as PRV and stuff like that, but bookings in general are just going to be the thing that makes your business thrive. If you don't have anything on your calendar, your business is not going anywhere. It's just not, okay? So events. I'm going to talk to you guys a little bit about how I get events on my calendar. Now, of course, we were we are in the fall and winter season. The holidays are over, so you might not see as many of events coming up right now, but all throughout the fall and winter season, there's lots of events um, that you can get, right? They I start seeing, like, fall and winter events, like, in July and August, to be quite honest. But that doesn't mean that you can't get events now. There's lots of ways to get um, events on your calendar. You just have to be willing to look. It's going to take a little bit of time. It's going to take, you know, five, ten minutes here to just look something up. So if you have that willingness to actually sit down and look for events with the ways that I'm going to tell you, then you can get um, events on your calendar, okay? So I'm a part of Facebook groups in my local area. If you just search, like, whatever your area is, like, for me, I have Long Island vendor events or, I don't know, Nassau County events or whatever. Whatever, you know, is in your area. Um... I don't know, I'm trying to think of like other areas that you, where you guys are from, but, or Vegas, like let's say, uh, Las Vegas vendor events, whatever. If you just even search that on Facebook, you guys. So I love the search feature on Facebook. If you're just like on your home screen and you go up to the top of your, you know, the search bar on Facebook, you could literally use that search bar like Google. It's crazy. You could literally look up anything on Facebook and I guarantee you something will come up. So if you just search like vendor shows or... I don't know, just anything, and then go to, when it when it pulls up that search, you'll have the option to search it by people, you'll have the option to search it by pages, by groups, by events, you can look up events, like, send, or if Facebook has, like, a whole event section, right, you know, like, you'll see things pop up in your newsfeed that says, like, this person's going, is interested in this event, or whatever, Facebook, if you just go to the event section on Facebook, there's tons of, of events that Facebook suggests for you, 
in your local area that you can look up or getting a part of local vendor groups on Facebook. Um, in the groups, people will post and they'll be like, oh, hey, doing a vendor show, looking for uh, vendors the table the cost is fifty dollars or whatever it is um you know and then you you sign up for it or you ask them hey do you have any sensi reps yet if they don't you give them the email they send you a contract and that's it and you and you you give the payment and then you're you're set so usually I typically pay, I probably won't, like I think the most I've ever paid for a table was $75 and that was because it was a rather large event. But local small events, you guys, like $25 to $50, $60 max on tables where you can grab a booth. Sometimes they even include the table with it. So if you don't have a table, like they might include it with it or go to freaking Walmart and get a table, a six foot table that cost you like $20 or whatever it is and it's investment and then you have it. So, um, you know, just like being a, like in the know of what's going on. So Facebook groups, a really great way. Um, Google, of course, if you just Google like vendor shows in your zip code area, like I do, I'll just Google and I'll be like vendor shows 11793. Like I know for us here in New York, we have a, there's a website called Nassau County Vendor Events or Nassau, Nassau County something. It's like Nassau County Craft Shows or something like that. So just Google vendor shows, craft shows, um, boutiques or whatever, things like that in your area, in your zip code. I guarantee you things will come up, okay? So as you're doing this, you're making your list of things. Now this is prospecting for events. We talked about prospecting yesterday of the people that you have in your circle. This would be prospecting for events. You're, you're looking for something with an, with an intention of, the, of whatever that outcome is, okay? which would be getting those bookings on your calendar. But if you're not in the know, if you don't know what's going on, if you're not actively trying, it's gonna be way harder, okay? Radio stations too, believe it or not, like local radio stations here, we have Z100. If you go on their website, they usually have um, spots where they have events that they're doing, that the radio shows are doing. And a lot of times you can sign up for things like that or find out what wherever that, org you know, whoever is organizing that event, you can then contact that person as well. Okay, um, word of mouth too is going to be a really great way, obviously, through your customers, okay? I can't even tell you guys how many times customers refer me to vendor events. If there is, um, you know, like they'll tag me in things on Facebook, if people are looking, if they'll be like, oh, hey, we're running this event, I'll have people that will tag me. I have one customer that buys from me every now and then, but the way she communicates with me more is just tagging me in or texting me like she referred a customer to me over the holidays or she'll just tag me in and be like, this person's looking for a sensi person or this person is looking, you know, they need a rep over here, so I'm going to tag you there. Like I have one customer that just does it all the time. And so what I do is I just send her free sensi every now and then. So if she, um, you know, refers me to somebody, like over the holiday season, she referred me to a customer. Now this customer purchased a large order from me. They're a new contact of mine. And this girl always refers me to people. And she also placed an order over the holidays for some teacher gifts that she got from me. I sent her a bath bomb and a scent circle in the mail with a thank you card. Didn't charge her anything. I literally was just like, thank you so much for always keeping me in mind when thinking about Scentsy. It means so much to me. Here's a little gift from Scentsy Claus, whatever you know referrals and taking care of your customers are going to be a great way for them to know that you're in the business to look for to grow your business so you know word of mouth like how are you creating that word of mouth this is kind of another topic like do people know you sell sensi are you just casually talking about it here and there or are you making it your mission to be known that you sell sensi that they can go to you are you talking about it every day and I don't just mean by being salesy and posting on Facebook and being like this is the special we have. Da, 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 da. People need to know you're living that Sensi life so that when they think of Sensi, they think of you. So what, then they have someone in their circle who's looking for a vendor uh, rep for, you know, a uh, rep for their vendor thing that they're putting together, you know, their fundraiser or whatever that they're organizing and they need a direct sales rep who's selling Sensi, they're going to think of you, okay? So you have to make that name of yourself and word of mouth is really going to be one of the best ways. You could even post on social media like, um, hey guys, I'm just, just want to let it be known. I'm looking for, you know, vendor events in, in, you know, my area. If you have anything that comes up, let me know because this wax lady is trying to get her groove on or whatever, however you want to say it. But like, if you don't tell people, they're not going to know. They're not going to know you're actively looking for events and you can't just expect it to fall into your lap. You kind of have to be a little bit proactive about how you're getting the events on the calendar and how you're trying to do it through word of mouth. You could send out an email blast to your customers. 
you know, thank you so much for being, you know, choosing me. I always say thank you for choosing me to fill your home with fragrance. That's like kind of my tagline that I tell my customers when I email them or things like that or send like little cards. Um, you know, so I'll say something like thank you so much for choosing me to fill your home with fragrance or like with my happy new year that I did this year. I sent out a happy new year email to my customers again. Thank you for choosing me to fill your home with fragrance. I hope you and your families had a great holiday season, blah, blah, blah. And then I said if you ever know who, you know, anybody who's looking for Scentsy in 2018 pass them my way because I have an awesome refer referral special or whatever like things like that if you don't tell people they're not gonna know okay but making that name for yourself is gonna be a really great way for you to get um, you know for people to know that you're getting events and stuff like that also other direct selling um, consultants so I have, you know, in the past few years, have come to know a lot of direct sale, a lot of direct sales reps, a lot of direct sales consultants. Now that doesn't mean I'm over here hosting parties and, you know, doing all these things with all these other consultants. I've just kind of grown my network through events, through parties, through social media of meeting people who are in the direct selling industry. Direct sales is huge right now, you guys. There's like, I'm sure you can think of like more than ten people that you're watching, that you're watching, that you that you know. Um, who are who own a business, who own a direct sales business. Okay, so those are good people to know because they're in the industry and they know, like they'll keep their eye out, especially if you become like cool with them. Like one of my really best customers, honestly, she is in another direct selling company and we sort of have a mutual respect, like as far as like, I know I'm not gonna try and recruit her, she's not gonna try and recruit me. Like we both know we're passionate about our business and that's fine, but anytime she's on events, like if she's on the local vendor, like we're on the same groups together and stuff like that she'll tag me and they'll and she'll be like listen this you know event that I'm doing they don't have a sensi rep like she'll kind of keep me in mind also now like I said it's not like I'm hosting parties for these other direct selling companies I don't do party swaps okay here's a perfect example the other day I saw somebody I don't even honestly I don't even know how we're friends but she was on my friends list and she's in another direct selling company I think I want to say it's like clever container or something like that I don't know we're 31 one of those like bag ones and I saw her posting something about um I'm looking for Scentsy this this um you know I'm looking for Scentsy does anybody know but it was, it was she was like I'm looking for Scentsy I'm looking for this I'm looking for that she had a bunch of things that like a, a lot of different companies that she was looking for and so instead of commenting on her post and being like I saw Scentsy you know because anybody could do that I messaged her now I, I don't honestly I don't know who she was I don't know how she was at my friends list but apparently she was and so I actually messaged her and I said, hey, I saw your post. I know that you're looking for Scentsy. And I actually followed, followed up with her just yesterday um, because I was trying to get bookings. So I said to her, I know you're looking for Scentsy. We have these awesome promotions, blah, blah, blah. Um, and I asked her about a party. And she goes, oh, I'm actually looking to party swap. Do you want to do a clever container party? <laughs> Never party swap with people, you guys. That is like that is like so unprofessional. Hey, I'll do a party if you do a party, because then it becomes like a like a favor kind of thing. I don't want anybody to do me any favors. I want people to actually genuinely want to host a party with me because I know that I'm gonna give them the best party, uh, best possible direct selling party sensi experience that they're ever gonna get. Okay, like. I don't want to party swap with people. I don't need anybody to do me new favors because I could go ahead and find another hostess. I don't need their party. I feel like when you have that outlook or that mindset, like you sort of take ownership a little bit more in your business as opposed to trying to get anything that comes along. You know what I mean? Does that make sense? Um, so, you know, I don't do party swaps with people for a few reasons. One, um, because like I said, I don't want anybody to do me no, no favors. I don't want to book a party just because they're doing a party for me. Occasionally, I might like, you know, do something together, but very rarely do I do that. That's one. Two, I know a lot of people who sell a lot of different things. You know, I mean, how many 31 consultants do you know? How many lip sense consultants do you know? How many unique or, yeah, unique and young living and all that do you know, right? So if I did a party for one person, let's say she sells unique, but then I have like three or four other friends or customers or contacts or whatever who sell unique and all of a sudden they hear I'm hosting a unique party, they could get a little butt hurt over that. So I'm not going to do that because then that's going to kind of burn bridges here with these people. I don't want to do that. And then two, when you host parties for other direct selling companies, you guys, you are literally handing your network over on a silver platter to people. I'm telling you right now, I've had it happen, for me, happen to me and I've... I, 
when I had it happen to me, I said I'm never burning that bridge again. Where I um, hosted a party and I put it out there on social media, hey guys, I'm hosting this party, whatever, or you know, the, the person selling whatever that product was sent me something and I have like, you know, whatever the product is. Like I'm like, ooh, look at this new face mask or whatever that I put on. Make sure you go to so and so, we're doing a party together, or whatever. And guess who sees all that? All of my customers see that. All of my, um, you know, my network of people, like my prospects, right, even if they're not my customers yet, um, all of you guys, my team, right, which one, it's out of compliance, just an FYI, to um, invite other directs, invite like your team and, and your Sensi contacts basically to another party. It's out of compliance to do that because you're not allowed to, to um, try and build a business through other through a current business that you have like for instance if you um let's say you joined another company which is like a whole nother topic you guys like don't get attracted to shiny objects like stick with one thing put your full focus into it I guarantee you that's where your success will be but that's beside the point but like let's say you joined another direct selling company and here you are telling all your Sensi contacts that you joined this other company and next thing you know they're buying from you here, that's considered out of compliance. It's cross-promoting, so you're not allowed to do that. But um, anyway, so that's why I don't do party swaps and um, you're handing that network over on a silver platter where you literally, like, it's crazy. Like, you can have, like, your contacts, your network, your team, whoever, see that party that you're hosting, all of a sudden be interested in whatever it is that you are selling, because they look to you as somebody um, who they trust and value their opinion, so next thing you know, they're buying from that person, and then next thing you know, they're joining that direct selling company because you handed it over to them, right? Does that make sense? So that's just sort of why I don't party swap with people, but if I had somebody who asked me, like yesterday, the girl who said it, I actually said to her, um, you know, thank you so much for the offer. I actually know a lot of people who sell, well, I think it was Clever Container. Um, I was like, so I don't really want to kind of step on anybody's toes, but, you know, um, I'd be more than happy to support you in the future. So let me know if you change your mind about the party or whatever. Like, I didn't even care to get the party booked at that point because, I, again, I'm not trying to party swap with anybody, okay? But those, regardless, being in the know with other direct selling reps, that's a good way for you to kind of know about the industry and things that are going on because they're 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 uh, oftentimes they refer you to people too because they know the hustle they get it they understand it okay um so let's talk a little bit about fundraisers then does, does anybody have any questions about events real quick before i move on to fundraisers and now's your time to shine do not be quiet if you don't have any questions okay i know i'm just kind of talking here and nobody's got any questions all right or if you have any input please let's hear it also, um, my Facebook sucks, and sometimes I don't see the comments right away because there's like a delay. So if I don't answer you or whatever, I'll go back, okay? So fundraisers, you guys. Um, fundraisers, I'm just looking here for the comments. Um, <clears throat> fundraisers are also another great way for you to build your business. Probably sometimes better than events because it's... A way for you to meet a whole bunch of people all at once, a great way for you to get bookings and to expand your business and to also help others in the process of it. Okay, so again, I'm not going into how I do fundraisers because that's a whole nother topic, but um, fundraisers, like just getting them on your calendar. You have to be with events, fundraisers, parties, whatever it is. The key thing here, you guys, when it comes to getting bookings, I'm going to give you a big secret. Are you ready for my big secret? Do you have your pen? You have your paper? Are you ready for the big secret? It's asking. Being prepared to ask people, okay? Get your asking gear. <laughs> That's what we say. Like, you have to be willing to ask people. You have to be willing to push yourself outside of your comfort zone and just ask. And guess what? You're going to hear no a lot. You're going to hear no more than you hear yes. I promise you that. I I set, I started my follow-up yesterday trying to get bookings. I did not get one booking yesterday. I must have asked, I think I asked like about 15 to 20 people in my, you know, with my order forms with my when I was doing my follow-up. And I literally got no response. I did have one person tell me what dates do I have. And then I responded back to her with the dates, but then she hadn't gotten back to the message yet. You're going to have people who ignore you. You're going to have people who see your message and clearly just don't respond. You're going to have people that'll be like, no. You're going to have people that'll say not right now. You're going to have people that'll say, no, I'm not 
not interested ever, like don't ever contact me again. <laughs> Very rarely does that happen, honestly, where people just kind of shun you away. But a lot of times people will be like, eh, no, no, not right now, it's not, it's not a good time. Or they ignore you. So what? What if they ignore you? Big deal. Hey, who's mad? Someone's mad over that. I'm trying to put together a proposal letter for a fundraiser right now. I spoke to someone about a fundraiser and they said, yes, send me info. Good. That's amazing, Amber. Um, yes, fundraisers are going to be a great way. And the, the, the number one thing that I can tell you as far as fundraisers especially and just like, you know, all types of bookings is just to ask. You have to be willing to talk to people and um, just kind of getting your name out there. So I do this like with fundraisers um, and events. I just basically, I'm just, you know, casually going every day talking about my business to people. Um, you know, just in the regular conversations and stuff that I'm having with people. So for instance, the auction basket that my son is doing, and I talked about a little bit about this yesterday. He's in Cub Scouts and they need somebody to put together or find out uh, how we can get baskets, not even just for the people who are doing it, but just like ask around about getting fundraiser baskets for this banquet dinner that they're doing in February. So I knew ultimately that I can put a Scentsy basket together. I've done them before for people and I've done them at events and stuff. And so I, I just asked her and I said, Hey, listen, I don't know if you know, I mean, clearly I go there branded all the time, but I said, Hey, I don't know if you know, but I sell Scentsy and I could totally put together a basket for this auction. I would love to do that. That was it. Right? So that's just like one thing that's just like a basket but like even fundraisers just casually talking if you have somebody like people are always looking to to grow funds you guys like people are always looking to to gain to gain funds in one way or another okay so you ha you just have to be willing to listen for that and then talking to them about it okay um, Google, you can even like Google um, local dance schools in your area or um, you know, different charities like sports clubs and things like that where you can actually just Google like, you know, dance clubs, sports clubs in, in you know, your zip code, like me, 11793 and a whole bunch of things have come up. And I've done that where I will literally just call somebody, it's called cold calling, I'll just call them and I'll be like, hi, I just wanted to... You know, um, you know, I know that, you know, just see if you guys are looking for some fundraisers at, right now or if you're looking to raise funds in, you know, this time of year. I want Sensi and um, I'd love to talk to somebody about how to, you know, raise, help you guys raise some funds or whatever, however you want to word it. Um, and if they say yes or, you know, sometimes, like I said, they might be like, oh, we already have a Sensi person. Or they might even say, oh, no, um, we're not looking to do that right now. We're already, our fundraisers are set. Then, or they might say yes. Like my, um daughter's preschool where my son went also they already know me there and I've told you guys before they let me set up a table every now and then with my sensei stuff so um they always have fundraisers throughout the year that they work with they work with Yankee Candle they work with um just like the candy stuff and this year they did pies so when I was doing my most recent event there which it's only me there it's nobody else um just setting up my table I talked to the director at the school and I was like listen I know that what are I said when do you usually get your fundraisers set up because I was like I know you have your fundraiser set for this year but um I'd love to help you guys out with a fundraiser um you know and help you guys raise funds because Sensi's awesome and I know you do um you know Yankee Candle but a lot of times you know people prefer the Wickless over Yankee Candle and even I mean she's purchased from me so she's like that's actually a really good idea um and she goes talk to me at such and such time so I didn't get it booked right there but I planted the the seed and I just asked her right so that when that time comes and it's ready to talk to her and she's getting her her fundraiser set up for the following year she'll think of me or I can contact her and follow up later and be like, hi, I know we chatted once about, you know, the idea of doing a Sensi fundraiser next uh, school year. So um, I'd be more than happy to drop off a packet or go over information with you, whatever. Um, how do you go about finding finger fundraisers or finding fundraisers to donate the baskets to? Like I said, it just, it's word of mouth. It's talking to people. It's listening to who, who in your circle or who it is that you're coming in contact every day, okay? So, like I said, my daughter's in preschool. I know that schools and stuff like that are really great. Dance clubs, like I said, they are all great ways to um, think about how people are raising those funds, okay? Um, 
at an event that I was at. You just have to be willing to talk to people, okay? These things come up in conversation. It's not just me being like, let me look for a fundraiser on Google for things in my area. No, because nobody's advertising fundraisers. Very rarely are people like, oh, hey, we need funds. If you have someone, and I know this sounds crazy, if you have someone who maybe they have a sick child or maybe they have like, you know, you see them posting on social media, and they're like, oh my gosh, I have this condition, all these bills, and you know, I just have all this stuff going on and it sucks, or wh whatever the whatever it is that you're seeing where people could use the benefit of a fundraiser, you could always just reach out to them and be like, hey, listen, I know that you have um, you know, some things going on with your son, and this is all like hypothetical, God forbid, situations, but like, let's say you saw something like that. Like, I've actually done that before. I did a fundraiser when I first joined, not like not too long after I joined, um, for a boy that I knew his mother um, on Instagram and he had this like condition or whatever and he was in and out of the hospital and so I um, reached out to her and I was like listen I know that you guys have this going on you know I don't want to step on your toes or anything like this but I'd love to be able to help you you know with a Sensi fundraiser so I ended up doing the fundraiser for her and it was a small fundraiser because I was stupid and I only did it online anyway but I I think I raised like it was small. It was only like two or three hundred dollars for her, but that was still two or three hundred dollars that I gave her, you know? So you just have to be willing to listen to things like that. When I was at an event a few months back, um, over the fall, there was a woman that was next to me. The event ended up getting rained out. I think I told you guys this, but um, the woman next to me was selling fake handbags, and her and I were just talking the whole time because it was so dead. There was, like, nobody there, and um, we were talking, and she mentioned how she was doing this fundraiser. She had a Sensi rep doing a fundraiser who canceled on her, and so I was like... Um, I was like, oh my gosh, I know that it's like in three days, but I'd be more than happy to come and help you with that. And I ended up booking something with her three days prior, and I jumped on the opportunity. I went to the, it was like a party slash fundraiser, and I ended up doing it for her, and I sold $300 there because it was a joint party. Remember when I told you about that? Joint party with somebody else, um, where it's like people, the guests there are going to be like sharing the sales kind of because they can only spend so much so anyway point being is I sold $300 at that party and then I donated $75 to her because I gave her 25% of my commission so I gave her the $75 from there I had another person book a party and then I had another woman contact me like a few days after getting her order saying that she was running this um this uh, fundraiser and they needed somebody to put together a basket as well so from there I put together a basket for another person who then you know and putting together baskets to you guys is also a great way too. now sometimes it may be like oh my gosh I'm giving away this basket I don't know who's gonna get it or whatever but it's also a way to get your name out there you're still giving catalogs with your information on it um, you know you are hoping that that person who has that basket contacts you yes but it's still a a great way for you to get your name out there anyway you know if someone wants a basket like if someone wants a sensi basket me I have no problem I always do it anyway because usually I take stuff that I already have like my stock and stuff and so those are things that I'll do and I'll put like little stickers on it that say with a drawing slip that says like text me um, fill out the drawing slip and then text me back a picture of your drawing slip to be entered into my drawing so that hopefully I get their contact information that's kind of like hit or miss I'm not saying to go ahead and start booking auction baskets you know but it's still if someone has wants a basket I'm I would never deny it is my point okay now it's not always income producing but it's still a good way for you to get your name out there and put your personal touch on that and not only that the person who had that basket is going to remember that you gave them a nice amazing scentsy basket and they're going to keep you in mind for the next time that they need to you know think of somebody to sell scentsy okay um what else do I have here? Um, with your fundraisers, think about your contacts, your list of 100, like I said, we talked about this yesterday. Break it down. How many people on your list do you know right now that could possibly use a fundraiser or whoever it is? And I'm not saying you're, you know, think of right now, but like you have to break down your list of 100 and see how these people can, you know, be an asset to your business, whether it's a fundraiser, whether it's maybe they can refer you to an event, get a party on your calendar, whatever it is, you have to break it down and really think about your um, list of 100. If you know anybody who's in like nonprofit organizations and maybe needs to raise funds here and there, um, 
I mean, I have so many people. I have an attorney that I used to work for on my on my Facebook, on my friends list, and sometimes I'll think about like, um, like he actually contacted me not too long ago. I think his girlfriend or somebody was looking for Sensi. But there was something, I don't know if it was him. I had somebody on my list where I was like, oh, this person might know somebody. It was like an attorney that I worked for. And so I contacted him and, and said, um, do you know this person? Because like, sometimes people like that, especially professionals, are going to be good people to refer you to other people because, again, they're just like in the know of whatever's going on, okay? Um, daycare center, my daycare center that I used to have Dylan in, um, I used to ask them about fundraising. I did a fundraiser for them, but I would frequently ask them if they need funds because daycare, schools, PTA organizations, they're always looking for fundraisers, okay? What do you put in your packets when you're trying to get someone to do a fundraiser? Um, honestly, that's another topic. That's like how I do my fundraiser. So I'm not going to go into that because I don't want to take up too much of you guys' time. But to be quite honest with you guys, I don't really do that many fundraisers. Like I do them and my goal is to do more in 2018, but I don't have any cookie cutter thing that I can give you. I know that in the files tab, there are fundraising letters and um, files and stuff for you to access there, but there's nothing that I'm doing cookie cutter. Every time it's usually different, you know, the couple times that I did my fundraisers. But those are going to be really great, um, you know, ways for you to get them on your calendar. Anybody who has school connections, if you know teachers or, um, you know, people who who might have a hookup at the PTA, any PTA moms and stuff like that. When I, when Dylan started kindergarten, now there's a PTA. Honestly, I haven't signed up for the PTA just because I have my own business that I'm running here. I'm a mom. I have all this stuff. So I'm like, I literally, and Dylan's in Cub Scouts. So for me, as much as I would love to be a part of the PTA, I might do it next year. I don't know. But I just physically don't have room on my calendar right now for any PTA functions for me to be a part of, so that's why I'm not doing it. But that is actually a really great way. If you have kids in, of school age who are in kindergarten and up, and you know, and you have the, the time on your calendar to be a part of the PTA, that's a great way too. Because those moms, first of all, let me tell you something about PTA moms, okay? Aside them, beside them being catty. <laughs> they are women who are driven they are women who are willing to put themselves out there and talk to people, okay? Because they're the ones who are organizing fundraisers. They're the ones who are putting together functions and trying to, to you know, do things for the classes and the students and stuff like that. And usually, if you make contacts with, with women who are in the PTA, those are the types of people, like those, in my eyes, are people who I would prospect to ultimately join Sensi because like I said, they're sort of driven a little bit more. They're not just casually sitting on the sidelines. They're like up there, if that makes sense. But anyway, that's kind of a whole other topic. But PTA, whether you are part of the PTA or whether you talk to, to a mom who's in the PTA and say, listen, I know that you're doing this function and you know, we have this going, or I know that you have this going on, but I wanted to let you know I do Sensi fundraisers. All you got to do is ask, okay? Dylan gets home fundraisers. I think he literally had three or four fundraisers going on in October. It was crazy. There was a candy one. There was a freaking wrapping paper one. It was so ridiculous. So why don't I take that opportunity and talk to them about how I do Sensi fundraisers? And I did say that, um, on the very first day of his school, they had a PTA. It was like it, they called it Kleenex and coffee because they knew that like all the kindergarten moms like me were gonna be sobbing. So um, I was talking to one of the moms there, and I actually t brought up fundraisers. And this is the first time I ever met this woman. First day of Dylan's kindergarten, I had no qualms about talking to this woman about Sensi. I have. What is she gonna do? Say no? So what? So what? That's the thing, you guys. We have to get over the word. We have to get over the idea of hearing no. It's gonna happen, okay? So I'm gonna start to um, get off fundraiser to talk about parties in a second because we're wrapping up here. But point being is that you just have to be willing to ask, okay? All right. So let's talk a bit about parties, okay? So we talked about events. We talked about fundraisers. I want to talk to you guys about parties because parties are literally, aside from events or fundraisers, probably going to be the most income producing thing that's going to be on your calendar are parties because they're going to get to experience Scentsy right there, particularly with home parties. Basket parties are great, Facebook parties are great, but home parties are going to be the bread and butter of your business, okay? Because they're going to get to experience it and sell and smell it. We always say it's the smell that sells. So you really need to get parties on your calendar for people to experience Sensi. Now, if we're talking social media with Facebook, like honestly, 
I feel like you need to be doing Facebook Live parties if you're going to be doing Facebook parties. There's so many, like, people doing parties on Facebook that they're so hit or miss. They can be really great or they can suck. And honestly, a lot of times my Facebook parties suck. But Facebook Live at least lets you give people the experience of Sensi by showing it to them in person, okay? Um... But the number one thing is when it comes to getting parties on your calendar, and like I said, you guys, right, after this, you're going to highlight, you're going to think of the days that you have available for bookings, whether it's events, fundraisers, or parties. If you do not have any parties on your calendar, or you feel like you've exhausted your resources, or you feel like people are just not wanting to book, it's time to get your own parties on your calendar. So you can do an open house. Okay, you can throw an open house where people come and, you know, whether they're buying your stock, your personal stock, or whether they're coming there and you're throwing your own party. That's one. Launch party. If you're a new consultant and you have not had a launch party, a home launch party, you need to do that right now. That needs to be like a January goal for you if you're a new consultant is having a launch party on your calendar within like the next two to three weeks. Okay, launch party. Um... New season catalog launch. So let's say when we come into transition month in February next month, our new spring catalog starts in March, okay? So you could do a you know spring catalog kickoff party at your house. Why can't you do that? If you can't get parties on your calendar and you feel like nobody's wanting to book, you need to do your own parties. You're, you're in control of your business. You are in control of your business, okay? So don't complain and don't make excuses that you can't get parties on your calendar because you could do your own parties, okay? I try and do my own parties every every couple of months. I definitely do a new season catalog party um, or like a relaunch my business party kind of thing. Whatever it is that you want to do, however you want to call it. You could even in January, you could do a bring back my bar party. You can do like where everybody comes and it's like an 80s theme or something like that and everybody's dressed up in like old attire or whatever. However you want to do it bring back my bar party um customer appreciation events they're really great over the holidays and also through the catalog season um twice a year i do mystery hostess parties so i'll do them usually these types of parties i'll do around like holidays or new season launches because it's like a new fresh start there's new products and people can take advantage of that okay um again like i said the mystery hosts are great but that's like where you literally throw a party and you give somebody the rewards however you want to you know they get entries into the drawing that's up to you but you give them the rewards okay but regardless it's the smell that sells and regardless it's your business so you need to make sure that if you're not getting any parties on your calendar and you don't know who to ask and you don't know who, you know, you don't have anybody who feel like you want to do a party, then throw your own party. That's number one, okay? You need to be in control of your own business. Number two is that you need to really think about how many people you're asking. Let's really think about your list of 100, and like I said, whether you want to break that down by booking conversations, but you have to be willing to ask a lot of people. They say that one out of every 10 people say yes. So if you ask 10 people, you're probably only gonna get one party on your calendar. If you ask two to three people, you're probably gonna get zero parties on your calendar. Why is she crying? Because my husband's not watching her. That's why she's not crying. That's why she's crying. Um, so you have to be willing to ask people, okay? A lot of people. You guys, I mean, and this is the thing, you're gonna hear no. All of these people yesterday, and I'm not even done with my follow-up because I told you guys I have, like, I have to break my follow-up down into increments here and there because I have so much over the holidays that I would just wasn't caught up on. But these are all people that I followed up with yesterday at the one-month mark for getting parties booked, okay? Look at all these order forms. These are people who have ordered from me probably over the past month because this is at the one month mark where I'm checking in with them okay so we're going to talk about follow-up um in the next couple of days but this is why follow-up you know is going to be crucial to you in getting parties booked also which is a whole nother topic but like you have to be willing to ask a lot of people in order to get parties booked so again break down your list go through your um your um you know, your face, your Facebook friends list or your te your phone. Sometimes I, like, you end up getting contacts in your phone. Like, I'll go through my phone and I'll be like, who is this person? Or, like, on your Facebook friends list, people that you're networking with and meeting and adding to Facebook and other customers. Maybe you met them at an event or another Facebook party. Go through your Facebook friends list because every now and then you're going to find there's going to be more people on there. And those are perfect people, you know, to reach out to. What happens? Who cares? If you reach out to them and you ask them to book a party, what's going to be the worst that, the ha that, they, that happens? They say no or they ignore you? So what? So what? 
get over yourself. <laughs> That's what I feel like you, when you have that mentality, like I said, like it's going to be so much easier because you're going to hear no, it's going to happen and it's very easy to get discouraged. And I'm not like, um, discounting that. And I know that you, you know, for most of you guys, it, it, it is discouraging to feel like when someone says no or they're ignoring you because you get that like, what the hell, they saw my message. And I'll tell you, Facebook is the damn freaking devil because Facebook tells you who sees your post or they'll, it'll say seen by 39 people or it, even with like you send them a message, it, you know, in Facebook Messenger, it'll show that they saw it. But so you're over here, you're like, they saw my message. Ah. Meanwhile, they could have been driving while they saw your message. They could have been multitasking or just not had a chance to get back to you in that moment. And so it gets very discouraging. But I think you just need to push past that and just know that you have to ask people. You're going to hear no. And if you don't ask a lot of people, then you're more than likely not going to get any parties booked, you guys, okay? So if you can't do it in your house, go to Starbucks, right? Go to a local park or Panera. Bring your testers with you. Do you know how many times I've literally had someone, um, even not for a party, but just like tell me like, oh, hey, they were thinking about, um, you know, placing an order. I'd be like, sure, let's meet up for coffee. I can bring the testers and we can totally like sift, you know, mingle and, and smell the scents. I've gone to Starbucks so many times with my testers and where it's funny where you're sitting there smelling with your, you know, the, your customer of whatever the scents are, other people around are going to be like, oh, hey, what is that? It's happened so many times because they're going to see all these little things that look like lip glosses and it's going to be intriguing to them. They're going to hear you talking about the business. They're going to hear you talking about Scentsy. And next thing you know, they're going to be interested. That's how you start to make connections, okay? Um, one party too, another thing is going to lead to so many more parties. All right. So for me, for a long time, I built my business on Facebook parties because I kept telling myself I can't get any home parties booked when that was just, I, the problem is, let me tell you one thing real quick before I drift. The reason why I started doing more home parties was because I stopped offering Facebook parties. I stopped offering basket parties as the option. I always defaulted on the home party first when offering a party option. And when I switched that mindset, that's when I started booking home parties because I didn't give them that option of hosting a Facebook party or a you know, a basket party. If they told me that they couldn't do a home party, I then offered the idea of a basket party. If someone said to me, oh no, I just, I really don't have the time or, you know, I don't have that many local friends. I hear that all the time. I don't have any friends. There are nobody that would come. And I'd say, well, th you know, that's totally cool. It's fine. I, you know, we also have like little mini pouches that I can give you so you can still experience the fragrance and you could totally like take it to work with you and just like, you know, casually share it around there on your own time. You know, I love when people tell me they don't have time because I'm like, oh great, perfect. We have basket parties. You know, like I am always like offering a different option. If I have somebody who, um, you know, is out of state and obviously they can't host a home party for me, I offer the idea of a face party, but I offer to send them a basket party first, okay? Because um, I think it's very important that you have a multiple, like multiple avenues on how you're getting the PRV in your party when it comes to bookings. Now this goes into how I do parties and stuff, but when I'm actually trying to get bookings... Every time I have a home party, I give her a hostess packet, okay, which you can look up here on the group or on YouTube on what to put in the hostess packet, but I will offer, in my hostess packet, I offer mini testers in the packet so that they could smell the scents, they could share it around, and I tell them, you take this to work, for, you know, take this to work with you, share this around with anybody who can't attend your party because this is going to help reach your party goal. It's going to help, you know, get your, your rewards higher and gain even more free, free products. So... Um, you know, I do things like that. Or I'll say, um, for a home party, I'll, I'll, I'll also offer the idea of them booking a Facebook event with it. And I'll say, I'll set up an event for you on Facebook. You can go ahead and invite all your friends. And then anybody who can't make it, I'll give you a party link for you to share with them. That way your rewards are higher. And I always emphasize on the rewards that they're going to get, okay? So not just a home party, not just a basket party, not just a Facebook party, but kind of like all around. I offer, I start off with the home party and then I try to incorporate the others with it. It. And if it happens where they don't want to do, you know, all three, all three together or, you know, one or the other, that's fine. But if I'm not asking you guys, the answer will always be no. I said this yesterday. If you do not ask, the answer will always be no. Okay. So, um, I think that you just need to get one good party where you coach your hostess, which is what we're going to talk about th later this week, one good party on your calendar where she has a lot of guests, and then that is going to help you branch out with your home parties. You need 
one good party because I told you I built my business of Facebook parties and for a long time I told myself I couldn't get home parties booked one day I ended up booking a party somebody one of my mommy friends whatever she invited 14 guests there and this is before I even really knew what the heck I was doing in home parties um, and I mean I'm still growing and evolving in the things that I do in my parties but like I didn't know to coach my host I didn't know to say you know, shoot for at least 10 attending guests. Like every party that I have now, I tell my host, shoot for at least 10 attending guests in order to have a good party. I didn't know to say that, but she just so happened to invite 14 people to that party. And from there, I, st I was like a home party slinging boss because I had one really good party from people who I didn't really know. That's another thing. It wasn't like we're all in the same circle. This was somebody, it was like a mom friend. And then all those people there were brand new people that I was meeting at that party. It wasn't just like a friend who hosted a party for me and we know all those people. Your friends are not gonna do you favors, guys. Start looking to do business with people outside your network in the best possible way. Through events, through fundraisers, through party bookings, and that's how you start to grow, okay? Um, but once you have one really good party, you can kind of branch off from there and try and get more parties booked through booking games. There's lots of ideas on YouTube on different games you can play to do bookings. Um, also, when asking people to get parties on the calendar, try to avoid using the word party. Think about it in like a casual, fun way of how they can enjoy Scentsy. You know, very rarely do I say, oh, hey, you want to host a party? We have double half offs this month. That sounds so like they're doing you a favor. Nobody's going to want to do you, do you a favor. What's in it for them? Really think about what's in it for them. They're getting free products. They're getting items at half off. And if you have personal specials, that's the things that I'm going to highlight. So, you know, when I'm talking about booking with somebody, um, you know, I'll say things to them like, you know, if you think you'd be interested in getting a few girlfriends together or, you know, or this is the promotion I'm running. If you think you'd be interested in getting a few, a few friends together instead of this is a promotion I'm running. Do you want to host a party? You know, doesn't that sound a little bit different? Um you know, and kind of go into things like that. Um, following up too, like I said, is going to be really crucial. Social media is also a great way to get parties booked, you guys. I put up a diffuser post the other day. I told you where I was like, which one would you like to get half off? And I had a few people um, respond. And then I messaged them. One of the girls was the one that I said, told me to give me her dates that I had, but she still hasn't gotten back to me yet. But that's right there, like simple. I put, I put up the post and they responded and then I messaged them, right? There's also like, if you go on the flyers groups, there's these, you know, pick a egg or pick a, you know, a Christmas tree or whatever. Then they pick it and you tell them what the special is. So those are types of things. Also, going live. Guys, get out of your comfort zone. Get, push yourself to do things that you don't want to do because if you stay, if nothing changes, nothing changes. I love that quote and that saying. If nothing changes in you, in your business, in what you're willing to do in yourself, then nothing is going to change moving forward. You have to be willing to do things that you're not necessarily willing to do in order to grow. Okay, so go live. Like I'm actually, I don't know if I'm going to do it today, but probably this week, I'm going to be going live with my diffuser and just showing people how a diffuser works because guess what? They can get a diffuser for 50% off this month with double half offs with a $200 party, right? So I want to be able to show them what the diffuser looks like because they need to experience it. They cannot just like post a corporate flyer or you being salesy and posting your website and saying shop my link and do this or not even talking about Scentsy at all and hoping that they're going to want to book a party with you, right? So I want them to be able to experience it. Social media, although there needs to be tons of things that you do offline you guys like social media can be a really great asset to your business if you use it wisely okay if you use it correctly so invest in trainings this is a side note on how to market yourself how to brand yourself on social media and that's going to help you in the long run in getting parties booked and making connections with people by you being present on social media by you being present in your business okay so go live with like a diffuser or a warmer and show people what sensi is and so that way they're like oh i love that you know because i guarantee you I guarantee you, when people see Sensi in person, whether it's even on a video, in person, there's no way that they're not going to fall in love with it. You guys, we are in such an amazing company where we literally have a product that sells itself. All you have to do is share it with people and show it to them. So go live with the diffuser, show them how it works, go live with a warmer or the bring back my bars and do a live sif sniff sesh on camera with your customers or again in person at parties like they need to experience this stuff okay but there's lots of ways for you to get parties booked um 
you know, with things like that and, you know, the games and ultimately, like, I do a lot of my party bookings through personal specials. Like I said, I offer personal specials aside from what Sensi gives them, aside from the free and half off because I'm a business owner and I can offer whatever the heck I want. As long as you know that when you're offering these things, you're doing it compliant, um, like through personal specials, like as far as messaging people about it instead of just, um, you know, you're not allowed to like publicly advertise that. So as long as you're going about it correctly, you can do that. Um, you know, the email newsletter, things like that, but I don't like to just rely on email because you're hoping that someone reads it, you're hoping that someone gets back to you. It needs to be personally texting. This is the thing. Think of your list of 100. Really think of the people that you have, the booking conversations that you have, the people in your network. Message them individually, okay? I'm gonna give you two tips. One is message them individually, okay, via text message, because nowadays most people don't call. If you talk on the phone with, with your customers here and there and they're fine with that, that's fine, but figure out what the, what the form of communication is with your customers. If you're just texting someone and all of a sudden you go to call them to book a party, they're probably, like, it's just gonna be awkward. So keep whatever that form of communication is that you have with your customers, and when you're texting, you guys know I love this too. For those of you who I talk to frequently, voice message voice text is going to be one of your best like tools that you can use in your business to get parties booked because they're going to hear the tone in your voice they're going to hear the sincerity they're going to hear like you're a real person and you're not just like mass copying pasting to them every other person because nobody likes to feel targeted and how many emails or um how many text messages have you gotten about another direct selling company you know consultant texting you and you could just feel it's like so cookie cutter like they literally just copy to paste I've had people copy and paste things to me and it's not even my name up at the top and I'm like I literally know you just copy and paste you went on a mass copy and paste nobody likes to feel like that so be genuine with your customers okay voice text is like one of the best like I love it not only do they hear that but it's a time saver for you like I don't know about you guys but I hate texting I like it sounds so first world problems, but I got to the point where I just like, it takes too much out of my out of my day to even text. <laughs> That's why most of the time, like I'm sure some of you are sick of the voice messages with me, but I'll be like, hey girl, what's up? You know, because it's so much quicker. Um, so voice text them, you know, hey uh, Sally, I saw that you liked my diffuser post uh, when I went live with it earlier. I want to let you know you could totally get that beauty half off this month or however you want to word it, but be genuine with your customers, you know, with things like that with voice text. So does anybody have any last questions about parties um, before I go? I know I kind of ran past time here, but that's just because I literally ramble like a crazy person. So um, I'm going to let you guys go. Um, thank you guys for hanging in with me. If you have any questions, let me no, just put them down in the comments um, and I can go back and answer them. Um, one more thing I want to tell you guys. The this party booking or bookings, events, fundraisers, all that stuff is going to help you with our January challenge, right? So I came on here, I talked about our January challenge yesterday. We're doing a group um, challenge with Chris Ingles and Wigless Luster. Um, all of our directors are getting together and we are doing a group challenge for our team. So there are two um, $100 Target gift cards on the line, two of them, okay? So there's going to be two winners out of everybody in Wigless Luster. Okay, so that group is the double double challenge. If you haven't joined it already, make sure you go and join in. All you have to do is sell 500 PRV in January. And if you recruit anybody, um, you also get entries into the drawing that way. So you get one entry once you reach 500 PRV, and then you get um, two entries for every person that you recruit in January. And then the rules are on that group, but basically you're just gonna be putting, screenshotting these things underneath your director's picture. So obviously if I'm your director, or Nicole Hubbard's your director, that's who you would put it under. But um, um, the group rules and stuff are over there, but super simple. We've never had a challenge like this before, but I'm telling you with these tips that I gave you today, if you actually apply it and don't just sit here and watch the training and then not do anything after, apply it to your business, clear your distractions, turn off Facebook, sit down for 15 to 20 minutes. Even if you have to time yourself, you guys, I use this every morning when getting parties booked. 20 minutes I set myself on, the, on, on my clock. I know that sounds crazy, but if I don't dedicate myself 20 minutes a day to trying to get consistent bookings on my calendar, then I'm not going to have anything. So use these tips that 
that I gave you today, apply it to your business, and I guarantee you, you're gonna have 500 PRV once you get those bookings on your calendar. And if you don't have 500 PRV, it means you need to start asking more. And you, you, you know, you need to, if you don't have parties on your calendar, rather, or bookings on your calendar, you have to ask more people. And really think about who's in your circle, okay? So I'm gonna let you guys go, I love you. I think we're talking about, let me see what we're talking about tomorrow. Tomorrow's gonna be host coaching, yay! So we're gonna talk all about how to make the most of your parties when coaching your host, okay? Um, is what we're gonna be chatting about tomorrow, all right? I'll talk to you guys later. Go get them parties and bookings on your calendar. And then, you know what, actually, I forgot to say this, we're gonna be doing a booking blitz. So in a little bit, I'm gonna put up a post and we're gonna run a booking blitz until Friday, until the end of the six skills that we're having here, okay? To get as many parties on a calendar, because I don't know about you guys, but I need parties on my calendar too. I need bookings on my calendar. So I'm making a commitment to you to do uh, a booking blitz and to get parties and bookings on my calendar as well. And so, um, you know, that way we can kind of all do it together. Okay, so I'm going to run the booking blitz. Just keep a lookout for that post. I'll talk to you guys later. Bye-bye.